basketball. The only you can go to Ali with his hands. Ali had hand speed. See Ali, there's there's Ali before the, they forced him into retirement because he wouldn't fight in Vietnam. That Ali, if you go to like the Ali that fought Cleveland Big Cat Williams, that Ali is one of the greatest of all time. I mean, the greatest fucking heavyweight in terms of movement and. He could move like Sugar Ray Robinson, but he was a heavyweight. Yeah. Tall and switching stances and popping you with the jab, and you couldn't touch him. And he's standing right in front of you with his hands down. Yes. That Ali was a different Ali. But then when they made him take three years off, Ali really didn't train for those three years. Yeah. He didn't do anything. So when he came back against Jerry Quarry, all those years later, he's, he's physically, he was like soft. He didn't look the same. Like, pull up Ali versus Cleveland Big Cat Williams. So this is Ali Ali. And this is Ali when there was never oh, a heavyweight like him before. There yeah. was no one like him. And no one knew what to do. And Cleveland Big Cat Williams was a fucking killer. It's a badass, he was yes. a bad motherfucker. Like, look how powerful yeah. he is. Serious knockout artist. And Ali would just stand right in front of him and just start tuning look him up. And he just starts popping him with the jab, hooks. And Cleveland was just trying his best yeah. to close the distance. What's happening? Is it freezing? No, it's a it's a video breaking down the whole fight. Oh, I that. see. Look at that. It's not just the fight. So it's it's doing stop motion while someone's explaining stuff. Look at that, that. hook. <laughs> Jab to the body and then the hook, and he's nowhere to be found. Catches him with the hook coming in, and then immediately off the ropes yep. and out into the center. Right out. You just couldn't catch him. Incredible, he was man. Something special, man. And then eventually he starts tuning Cleveland up and, and drops him a couple of times. He knew. He knew. This is the there end. Is. This yeah. is the end. And then he stands over him with his hands up. Look at this. Bang. 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 And then one the right more. hand. Boom. Bam. I mean, come on, man. Nobody moved like no him. No one, dude. But Tyson. Could you pull Tyson up a picture of uh, Dwayne Johnson, Muhammad Ali? I got to show you this picture, dude. Oh. Yeah. When got, did you meet Muhammad I, Ali? When I was a kid. Oh, wow. In New Zealand. When I told you my dad was sparring with him. So here's a picture of me sitting on his lap. Do you oh. remember what year this is? This would have been 77. Look at that. Wow. Isn't that cool, man? Ali and some little girl, but uh, <laughs> that's me. So, dude, how about this? Wow. So, when I started the 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 nation the turn, the heel rock, right? That you saw earlier, not a white thing, not a black thing. You know, it's me. It's a respect thing. I started calling myself the people's champion just to piss people off. Mm. Like I'm your champion. I'm the people's champion, and the rock is the people's champion. Blah blah blah. And we were wrestling down in Louisville, Kentucky. And Ali's family came to watch. And his wife was there. Family was a big group. Afterwards, uh, they were waiting to say hello. Now, again, I'm going out there. I'm grabbing the microphone. And the people's champ says, I'm just laying it all in. So when I come back, I say hello to the family, his wife. And I say, hey, I just want you to know, I, if you could let Muhammad know, I, I call myself the people's champion in a way to pay homage to him, out of respect. But I'm going around the country saying it and people are shitting on me because that's what you want right. as a heel. And I said, I told his wife, so if you could please tell him, if he doesn't want me to use this because I know what this meant to him, being the people's champion, uh, I won't. And, dude, she said, he told me to tell you it's yours. <sighs> that was one message he told me to tell you tonight. I was like, well, I got emotional. It was just incredible. He was such an important cultural oh, figure. Oh, my God. Because he was the first boxer, the first, like, professional athlete of the highest regard who stood up stood and up. said, the Vietnam War is wrong. I'm not going to go fight some Viet Cong. No Viet Cong ever did anything to me. They didn't call me I'm not, going over, there. I'm not going over there. That's I'm right. not doing it. And they took away his livelihood, and they did it for three years. And when he came back, he was a fucking hero, a cultural hero. My parents, who were hippies, yeah. made me, well, it didn't make me, but we all watched his rematch with Leon Spinks because yeah. it was on TV. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's how much he transcended Boxing. The world of sports. Yes. He he was an important figure for like the beautiful qualities of human beings. That this guy had character and stood up for something yes. that was more important than sports and told the world. He used his platform to tell the world, I'm not gonna participate in this. This is wrong. Yes. And they took away his livelihood and when he came back, he was a hero in a completely different way. Yes. And when he fought Leon Spinks and he beat Leon Spinks, everybody was like, oh, my God. Everyone was so happy. 
Yeah. It was like, uh, just because when Leon beat him, it was like, no, no way. Mm -hmm. And then he had the rematch and he beat Leon and it was like, oh my God, he won. Like the world was better. You felt it. Yeah. You felt it. And there's a guy, as you said, who stood up and also, the, it, it's one thing if you stand up, but it's another thing. I stand up and the willingness to know I'm going to lose it all. I can lose it all. Yeah. And he did. For that moment, you he know, was, they tried to take it all away. Also, what I thought about a lot when I was worried about brain damage, he, I thought about mm. him a lot when I was having headaches from these sparring sessions because he was already deteriorating by then. Mm -hmm. You know, this was, you know, after he fought Larry Holmes, and which was a horrible fight to watch, where Larry was just teeing off on him, and you knew that yeah. it was, the end was there, and he fought Trevor Burbick, and it's like, God, yes. oh, these are horrible fights to watch. This guy who just needs a payday and can't let it go, and you know, and he was our hero. And now you're yeah. watching the worst cliched ending to a great career, a beautiful career, which is a mm -hmm. great boxer just getting beat up by the up and coming guys. Yes. It was sad, really. It really remember. like ruined Larry Holmes's career because people hated Larry after that. And Larry was one of the greatest of all time. Greatest of all time, man, out of Easton, Pennsylvania. And Easton also, Assassin. Yeah, Easton Assassin, yeah. One of the best and, and jabs of doing all his time. Job. And just doing his job. One of the best jabs yes. of all time. And so not only were people hating him back then, but Ty that Tyson was watching that fight, mm -hmm. remember that? And Tyson yeah. watched that, and mm -hmm. he knocked out his hero, he beat his hero, mm -hmm. and Tyson already made that promise. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna, well, there's a famous mo moment where Ali comes up to Tyson before he fights Larry, and, and he says, get this motherfucker for me. Like you said- In the him, ring. Like, yeah, he just walks up to him and he's like, get this dude for me. <laughs> wow. And, and Tyson is like, already just so charged up. Just already, I mean, it was this was like a yes. legacy-making fight. And when he knocked out Larry Holmes, it was like, everybody was like, oh my God, no one's ever knocked out Larry. Like, no, oh, dude. That was crazy. And he was a big heavyweight. Yeah. Yeah. He was a big heavyweight. Here it is. He comes up to him. It's like, look at this. Get this motherfucker for me. <laughs> wow. Look at that. Look at the nod. The light yeah. nod. And look at Tyson. Just <laughs> fired up. Look but I'll tell you corner. something, man. Larry was older then. He was an older fighter. Yeah. You going to let it go? Uh, yeah, sure. Larry was an older fighter back then. You know, back then, it was. this is 36, you know, in the age of no testosterone replacement. Yeah. And Larry had taken some time off and... You know, came back for this fight. He was still very, very good, but Tyson was on another level. Oh, it was just, another level. He was just the new destroyer. He was the new Sonny Liston. He was the new Joe Lewis. He was the new Jack Dempsey. Combined. He was just something special. Yes. And combined also because of his um, his trainer had co all the videos of those guys. Mm -hmm. So he watched all those guys and Cuss. studied their movement. Cuss and, and Jim Jacobs, who was his... Uh,